When we first started FTC, we would have loved to know that ball bearings have less friction than bronze bushings. Ball bearings are really good for smooth rotary motion. Also, we recommend using dead axles over live axles. With live axles, the motion causes force to be transferred through the part, which can lead to shearing. It's also a good idea to use thicker shafts when possible. These have more surface area, so they can handle more torque. When it comes to screw hubs versus clamping hubs, it's a good idea to use flange clamping hubs when you need more torque but less speed, but use set screw hubs when speed is more important. If you ever have to cut Lexan, use a bandsaw, not a Dremel, because a Dremel causes it to melt and this can lead to an inconsistent cut. Over our two years of FTC, we have learned some tips and tricks for building. For competition, it's always better to build a reproducible robot that can complete a few tasks consistently instead of a robot that attempts to do everything. This makes your robot more reliable and appealing to other teams when scouting. While creating your robot, use math and physics to CAD it first. This will help catch any design flaws before spending more time than necessary. When building, start off with the drivetrain and then add other subsystems to score points. Make sure to calculate the physics for each motion component. When calculating torque, double the requirements so that you're sure that your robot will consistently perform the intended task. When using servos, always use servo blocks. This will keep them from burning out, and it'll keep the servo horns from breaking. If you get stuck, don't be shy to reach out to experienced teams for some help, but don't get overwhelmed by what their robots look like. The most important thing to do while creating your robot is to make a feasible plan at the beginning of the season and stick with it. Actobotics has really useful, versatile parts, and it's a great building system to use. We use flange ball bearings, and these are great because they allow smooth rotary motion and they reduce friction. We also prefer using quarter inch D shaft with D hubs to prevent slipping. In addition, we like to use the 90 degree angle brackets to make the connections between our channels on our robot stronger. In order to prevent our servos from burning out or the horns from breaking, we use servo blocks. Lastly, we love to use the flange clamping collars to prevent the shafts from shifting in and out. The flange on this part allows it to be flush with the ball bearing. As any FTC team would tell you, we encountered a bunch of different problems when building our robots. One of the biggest problems we had was shearing of our D-shafts due to the force exerted on the part. In order to fix this problem, we used dead axles to keep motion from being transferred through the axle. We also used D-hubs which help prevent slipping which causes shearing. Another problem we had was not having enough torque to complete a certain task. Always design the subsystem so they can handle twice the amount of required torque. We've burnt out lots of servos and broken a lot of horns. To fix this, we used the Actobotic servo blocks. Lastly, we actually broke our bandsaw because we tried to cut steel on it. So don't try to cut steel on any normal saw. Make sure you have the right blade for the right material you're using.